Muhammad Shafi Ibn Muhammad Yasin Us Mani Diobandi Urdu MEHMD Shfi BN MEHMD Yasin Thameni Dibdi Arabic MEHMD Shfi BN MEHMD Yasin Althmani Aldibdi Muhammad Shafi Ibn Muhammad Yasin Al Uthmani Ad Diubandi C the 25th of January 1897 to the 6th of October 1976, often referred to as Mufti Muhammad Shafi, was a Pakistani Sunni Islamic scholar of the Diobandi school of Islamic thought. A Hanafi jurist and Mufti, he was also an authority on Sharia, Hadith, Tafsir, Quranic exegesis, and Tasawwuf, Sufism. Born in Dioband, British India, he graduated in 1917 from Darul Uloom Dioband, where he later taught Hadith and held the post of Chief Mufti. He resigned from the school in 1943 to devote his time to the Pakistan movement. After the independence he moved to Pakistan, where he established Darul Uloom Karachi in 1951. Of his written works, his best known is Ma'rifal Quran, a tafsir of the Quran. Topic: Birth and early childhood. Muhammad Shafi, son of Maulana Muhammad Yasin, was born on 21 Shaban 1314 AC, the 25th of January 1897, in Dioband, British India, in present-day Saharanpur district, Uttar Pradesh, India, to an Usmani family. He was given the name Muhammad Shafi. Mehmd Shfi by his father's sheikh, Maulana Rashid Ahmad Gangohi, though he was originally named Muhammad Mubin. Mehmd Emban by his grandfather, Khalifa Tasan Ali. Shafi grew up in a religious environment. As a child he played in the courtyard of Darul Uloom Dioband and sat in the company of his father, who was a teacher at the school. Education. <inaudible> 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 At about the age of five, Shafi began Nazira reading of the Quran with Hafiz Muhammad Azim at the Darul Uloom. After reading the Quran, he did Hivs memorization of the Quran with Hafiz Abdul Azim and Hafiz Namdar Khan. In 1325 AH he commenced the study of Urdu, Persian, mathematics and other subjects at Darul Uloom Dioband, which he completed within the next five years under the supervision of his father. He studied arithmetic in Euclid from his uncle Munshi Manzur Ahmad and Tajwid from Kari Muhammad Yusuf Maruthi. Along with teaching Shafi the Persian books, Maulana Yasin also instructed him in the elementary Arabic books of Sarf morphology, Nahw grammar, and Fiqh jurisprudence, up to Fusil i Akbari, Hidayat and Nahw, and Munyat al Musali. In 1330 AH 1912, or 1331 AH 1913, Shafi was formally enrolled in the upper level Arabic classes of Darul Uloom Dioband. He did Dora Hadith in 1335 AH 1916 under the supervision of Anwar Shah Kashmiri, and completed his education in 1336 AH 1917-1918. The teachers under whom Shafi formally studied included Allama Anwar Shah Kashmiri Allama Shabir Ahmad Usmani Maulana Mufti Azizur Rahman Usmani Maulana Saeed Mian Ashgar Hussain Diobandi Maulana Muhammad Izz Ali Amrohi Maulana Muhammad Rasul Khan Maulana Muhammad Ibrahim Balayawi Maulana Ghulam Rasul Hazarwi Maulana Muhammad Ahmad ibn Muhammad Qasim Nanadawi Foremost among his teachers was Anwar Shah Kashmiri, who was the school's Sadr Mudaris head teacher. Some of the books Shafi studied with him were Sahih al-Bukhari, Jamie at Termidi with the exception of a small part, at Termidi's Shamayil and Ilal, al-Falsafa al arabiya on modern philosophy, and Shar and Nafisi on medicine tib. Shafi was among Kashmiri's closest students, and Kashmiri would later select Shafi for assistance in refuting the Ahmadiyya movement. Shafi studied Sahih Muslim and half of Hidayah with Shabir Ahmad Usmani, whom he would later accompany in the movement to create Pakistan. With Maulana Ashgar Hussain he studied the Hadith collections Sunan Abu Dawud, Sunan and Nasi, and the remainder of Jamie at Termidi. With Azizur Rahman, head of the Darul Uloom's Fatwa department, Shafi studied the Mawada of Imam Malik in the transmission of Yahya ibn Yahya and the transmission of Ash Shaybani, at Tahawi's Shar Ma'ani al Athar, Tafsir al Jalalain, Mishkat al Masabi, Ibn Hajar's Shar Nukbat al Fikar, and Hisni Hasin. 
He studied Sunan ibn Majah with Ghulam Rasul Hazarwi. With Izz Ali he studied all the books of literature, Maibazi's Shar Hadayat al-Hikmah, at Taftazani's Shar al-Aqaid al-Nasafiyah, Ubaid Allah al-Mabubi's Shar al-Wikaya, and some other treatises. With Maulana Muhammad Ibrahim he studied Sadra and Shams al bazaya After Dora a few books still remained, including Qazi, Mir Zahid, and Umar i Amma. These were completed in 1336 ah In that year Shafi was also appointed to teach some lessons. <laughs> Teaching career Maulana Shafi was formally appointed as a teacher in Darul Uloom Dioband in 1337 AH He began teaching the elementary level books of the curriculum and eventually reached the level of Dora Hadith. The first book of Dora level that he was given was Mawada Imam Malik, and he later taught other books. In 1354 AH he was entrusted with teaching Sunan Abu Dawud for some time in place of Maulana Ashgar Husayn. On Husayn's request he was given this lecture permanently, and he taught it until he left Darul Uloom Dioband in 1362 AH 1943. Shafi was regarded as an exceptional lecturer on many subjects, but two of his lessons were most famous. One was Sunan Abu Dawud, and the other was Makamat al-Hariri in Arabic literature. After leaving Darul Uloom Dioband, he taught Sahih al-Bukhari for three months at Jamia Islamia Dabhul, filling in for Maulana Shabir Ahmad Usmani. Shafi established Darul Uloom Karachi in Shawal 1370 AH 1951. There he taught Sahih al-Bukhari for several years, as well as Mawada Malik and Shamayil at Tirmidhi. Whenever due to health or other responsibilities he was unable to teach the whole of Bukhari, then those years he would teach until the Book of Wudu, and other teachers would cover the remainder. In the last four years of his life, he was bedridden and thus unable to teach regularly. However, on the insistence of students and teachers, every year he taught the first lesson of Sahih al-Bukhari and the last lessons of the Siha Siddha. Issuance of fatawa From the beginning of his teaching career Maulana Shafi frequently assisted Mufti Azizur Rahman, then head of the school's fatwa department. Azizur Rahman resigned from the Darul Uloom in 1344 AH Others occupied the post of Sadr Mufti, Chief Mufti until the Majlis-e-Shura of Darul Uloom Dioband appointed Shafi to the post on 28 Rabi al-Awal 1350 AH c. 13 August 1931. In addition to undertaking the duties of fatwa writing, Shafi also continued to teach some books of Hadith and Tafsir. In Rajab 1351 November 1932, Shafi published a tract entitled Nihayat al-Arab fi Gayyad and Nasab on caste. The weavers of the Dioband area who were regarded as a lower caste revolted against the fatwa, and from early 1353 AH to late 1354 AH rallies were held and threats were made against Shafi, in response to which a group of teachers took to acting as his bodyguards. Several scholars wrote or spoke in defense of the fatwa, including Shafi's Sheikh Ashraf Ali Thanawi, Said Ashgar Husayn, and Husayn Ahmad Madani. Due to the controversy, Shafi asked to be transferred to the teaching department, a request that was eventually granted by the Majlis-e-Shura in Shaban 1354 AH c. November 1935, Shafi remained in the teaching department over the next few years, during which two other ulama held the post of Sadr Mufti. On 25 Safar 1359 AH c. 4 April 1940, Shafi was appointed to the office a second time. He held the post until he left Darul Uloom Dioband in Rabi al-Awal 1362 AH March 1943. Estimates of the number of fatwas that he issued while at Darul Uloom Dioband range from 26,000 to over 40,000. Some of Muhammad Shafi's fatwas have been published in eight large volumes titled Imdad al-Muftin, while the majority remain unpublished. Topic: <laughs> Sufism From an early age, Shafi frequently attended the gatherings of Maulana Mahmud Hassan. Then when Mahmud Hassan was imprisoned in Malta, Shafi consulted Maulana Ashraf Ali Thanawi. 
Mahmud Hassan returned to Dioband on 20 Ramadan 1338 AH June 1920. In 1339 AH Shafi gave Bayah allegiance at his hand. However, Mahmud Hassan died a few months later on 18 Rabi al Awal AH November 1920. Shafi returned to Thanawi after Mahmud Hassan's death. In Rabi Ath Tani 1349 AH he received Ijazat i Bayah permission to take disciples and Khilafah spiritual successorship. Pakistan movement At the time Muhammad Shafi was teaching at Darul Uloom Dioband, Indians were struggling for independence from the British. When the All India Muslim League was formed to campaign for the creation of a separate Muslim state, Ashraf Ali Thanvi instructed all ulama and Muslims in general to support this campaign. Muhammad Shafi, with other scholars including Zafar Ahmad Usmani, joined the Jamiat Alema e Islam, a council of Islamic scholars formed by Shabir Ahmad Usmani to campaign for the creation of Pakistan. In 1363 AH 1944, Muhammad Shafi resigned from teaching and issuing fatwas at Darul Uloom Dioband in order to devote his time to the movement for the creation of Pakistan. He toured India, gave speeches, and issued fatwas for this purpose. Migration to Pakistan After independence, in 1367 AH 1948, Muhammad Shafi left his hometown of Dioband and immigrated to Pakistan. He founded Darul Uloom Karachi in 1370 AH 1950 Muhammad Shafi died on 10 Shawal 1396 6 October 1976. Works He wrote around 100 books explaining the Quran and interpreting Islamic law. His best known and most widely translated work is the Ma'rifal Quran, the Wisdom of the Quran, which he finished in Urdu four years before his death. This work, a commentary on the entire Quran, began as a series of weekly lectures on Radio Pakistan that ran for ten years. Topic Notes Topic External Links One Two